Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. This is Tanner Steed. Today we're going to be talking about a very basic palette that you can start out with if you've never oil painted before. Or if you've got a crazy amount of colors and you're just looking to refine uh, your palette, this is a great chance to get rid of some of those extra colors. Before I get started, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know if there's a video that you'd like to see. Comment down below. We're actually making this video as a result of someone who commented in a previous video. I have a lot of colors generally on my palette. And in fact, my tab array is filled to the brim with all of these random colors that I've collected over time. But you know what? Do you need all these colors? No. And here's why. Today I'm gonna to show you just five colors that you need just to start out oil painting that can cover 99% of all situations and all subject matters. It's not only just five colors, but these are reasonably inexpensive colors. So it's also great for the budget. We're going to start with our lightest light, our lightest color, and go all the way through the value spectrum with just these five colors. So the first one that we are starting out with today is titanium white. Titanium white is an opaque pigment that is essentially the go-to white that I always use. I tend to stay away from a zinc white. Zinc white will crack over time. And although it may have some interesting qualities, like it's transparent, kind of like lead white, titanium white is just stronger and more versatile. Start out by just getting the simple titanium white by Winsor Newton. And before I go on, I really want to emphasize that you are getting the artist's oil color, not the student grade, okay? Stay away from student grade. You're actually going to save money over time. And the reason why is, uh, with the student grade, what they do is they just pack it full of extra oil, extra filler, and they reduce the pigment load. So you always want to get artist grade regardless of your skill level. You're just going to save money over time. And it's good to practice with the, the good materials first, so then you get used to mixing and you start learning your own palette and understanding the relationships between different colors. And it's also important to have a limited amount of pigments and color choices on your palette so you master that palette and you're so familiar with exactly how two colors mix and you know what happens if you add another one. All right, so this is a budget palette and I just told you to buy the artist's oil, right? Not the student grade. Well, this paint tube is going to last so much longer than just the student grade and it has to do with just having extra filler in the paint. You're gonna find that you use more student grade paint than you're going to use the professional grade. So it's actually less expensive overall. All right, next up, is the most expensive paints that I would like for you to buy. It is Cadmium Lemon by Winsor & Newton. Now this, being a cadmium pigment, is, it is definitely the most expensive pigment for this palette. There are certainly more expensive pigments uh, elsewhere that are very exciting and uh, beautiful colors, but they're unnecessary for a limited palette. Now, this color is cadmium lemon, not the hue. Do not buy hue. It has to be actually cadmium lemon for this to work. And the reason why I want you to get this one and being it so expensive, cadmium lemon and cadmium paints in general have a very, very strong tinting strength, which means that they're extremely powerful pigments. Therefore, you're going to be using a lot less of them than if you were to buy the cadmium lemon hue or cadmium light hue. If you buy a hue, it's actually just a dye and it's not a very potent color in comparison. So I recommend buying not only the artist grade cadmium lemon, not student grade, but make sure it's not the hue and you're actually going to save money over time. And yes, it seems like a lot. This is like a 30, $35 tube of paint and it's really quite small, but I'm notice the size of this, okay? You don't have to buy the huge one. I'm, this is what I buy. I buy the 37 milliliter and I buy the huge titanium white. Now this cadmium paint will outlast this whole tube of white. You're going to use a lot more white than you are to use the cadmium. That is second on the list and we're going in order. So lightest light is white. Next up is cad lemon 
And after that, we are going to move into our warmer temperatures, our reds. This is alizarin permanent. And there's a little bit of paint on the label, but it is very important that you buy alizarin permanent, not alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson is a beautiful color, but it is not light fast. So if you've never heard this term light fast, light fast essentially means that uh, when exposed to light, the pigment is not going to lose intensity over time. So all of these pigments that I've shown you today are going to be archival. They're going to not only not crack, but they are going to last a lifetime and far beyond a lifetime. So if you're creating family heirlooms and you're giving them to your grandchildren or your brothers and sisters, they are going to way outlast you. And that's really important. This is actually a combination of two paints because the original alizarin crimson is not light, light fast and it's fugitive. So they actually created something that looks very, very similar and acts in a very similar way. It's an extremely potent color yet again, which is important because it'll be able to work well with the cadmium yellow, uh, lemon. And you can create some beautiful purples and violets with this color. I can't recommend this enough. And if you wanted, let's say a warmer red, because this is actually our only true red on our, on our uh, palette, you can mix just a tiny touch of cadmium lemon and you can create something that looks very, very similar to a cadmium red. All right, next up is our least expensive pigment. This is dirt cheap because it's actually made from dirt. It's burnt sienna and it is an extremely versatile pigment. I love this color, especially with painting portraits and landscapes. Out here in Colorado, I see this color everywhere in the rocks. It's really a, a great foundation for a lot of the soils out here. We have red rocks just right around the corner. If I'm painting any of those uh, beautiful, enormous rocks that coming out of the, the earth, um, I'm always using burnt sienna. I actually used to use this color to tone my canvas before going outside to paint, so I would thin it out and create kind of just a, a very thin wash and I'd let that dry so then I went out to paint I'd have this nice warm tone underneath all of my paintings outdoors. So you can try that out and it's a very inexpensive pigment and it's also light fast. All right next up is also a very inexpensive pigment and I have a couple tubes of it here in different brands. The brand doesn't really matter for this one. You can get Winsor & Newton, Gamblin, or even Utrecht. The color is Ultramarine Blue. Now, although I have it in this tiny tube here, this was uh, in one of my travel kits when I was flying across state lines. I don't like to carry big tubes, so I bought this little one. I definitely recommend buying the larger tubes because I just use this color all the time. Typically, I'll buy Winsor & Newton, but you can get Gamblin, Utrecht, Winsor & Newton. They're all roughly the same price, but this is a beautiful pigment. It's transparent, just like burnt sienna, and so you can use it for so many applications. I use it in my skies. I'll use it in shadows. I'll use it in hair and there there isn't one use for in any one pigment really this palette covers every situation if you're painting landscapes portraits still lives this palette is perfect for you uh, indoors and out it's just highly effective okay so we've got titanium white cadmium lemon alizarin crimson burnt sienna and ultramarine blue that's five pigments that you will use for the rest of your life, I'm sure. They're always on my palette, even if I have other pigments. Now, the only reason to add another color onto your palette is if you find yourself constantly mixing a mixture that is very, very similar to another color that you can buy in the store. Let's say like, along with yellow ochre that is easily mixable with this palette, I can mix a Naples yellow, a raw umber, and even a king's blue, all with just those five colors that I've shared with you. And there are many other colors that are, I would consider shortcut colors, that you can mix uh, using those five pigments. So you don't need all these extra tubes. Now, that is the only reason to add another color. If you find that you are always mixing something, and it would just be a shortcut if you had it on 
on hand, but you know how to mix it. That's so important. You have to know how to mix it and know what it does in relation to those other colors. But make sure you master those five colors before you add anything else to your palette. All right, and I know what you're thinking, but Tanner, how do I make a black? I need black on my palette. How am I supposed to darken anything? Keep ivory black or any other blacks off your palette originally because this color is fantastic. It's actually one of my favorite colors. I always have it on my palette, but do you need it? No. If we're trying to save money for working on a budget, you do not need ivory black, and here's why. All you need to do is mix complementary colors, okay? So orange, burnt sienna, it's a very dark pigment, and ultramarine blue. And when you combine those two at maybe like a 60-40 ratio, you can create an extraordinarily dark, dark pigment. And because you've pre-mixed that black, you can actually make a black that is cool and a black that is warm. If you just add a little bit more burnt sienna, it'll be warmer. A little bit more ultramarine blue, it can be cooler. Um, and having that control and having that understanding, fundamentally, you will be able to apply that in much more of a accurate way a much better application generally for any particular subject. So if you're thinking that, oh, okay, I'm working under natural light, it's a cool light, well then my shadows are warmer. Okay, so your black is going to have more of a warm tint to it. Whereas if you're working outside and you need a cooler shadow, it's going to have more blue in it, generally. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I'm gonna leave some links down in the details below with all of these pigments and some places to buy them. Generally, I like to shop on Jerry's Artorama or Dick Blick. If not, going to my local stores. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.